gosh. It's uh, nice, or was a few minutes ago when the sun was out. It was just so bright, and uh, we have so much rain lately that, gosh, when I uh, get up as early as I do, sometimes the weather does affect me, at least superficially. I don't let it drive me to take a nap. I don't let it affect my mood. <laughs> I don't let it bum me out. Okay, maybe a little. <laughs> but you know, that's kind of what I like about being able to be real, is that God already knows how I feel. So he always kind of gives me these little things, you know, like sometimes for me, the thing that really wakes me up sometimes is like when someone has a really off-the-wall question, you know, and I kind of, yeah, <laughs> jump on it and bingo, God wakes me up because it's like his spirit that kind of gives me the answer, not my spirit, because me, man, I just slap the guy and tell him go study, <laughs> or woman, <laughs> but you know, God always seems to want to be able to use us to share our personal life experiences as well as his word and how it's applied to our lives so that we could encourage someone to go on with God and to develop a personal relationship with him in a way that quite frankly simply means getting up in the morning and share coffee with him I mean I don't want to bring God down you know to a level that he isn't you know meaning like to make him so human that he's not holy but at the same time I want people to understand that you know Jesus is real you know he's not some figment of our imagination he's not someone that you know came down for the disciples only and disappeared and never came back again you know no God is alive you know and it's not just in a worship service context but in a everyday living reality and that's what he wanted to bring to his disciples at that time and they lived their life, you know, with the expectation that he was coming again to deliver them. And he did, in the moment of their death. But that confident expectation, though we call it the looking for the Lord's return, we know with our generation, different than any other generation, he's coming in our generation. He's coming in our time. We really... <laughs> kind of are like the last hurrah, you know, and kind of also like the last big work of grace in the world. Now, there's going to be a thousand years that, you know, Jesus is going to reign, and there'll be people that aren't saved during that time, and they're going to deal with life in a quote-unquote sort of perfect setting, although for them it may not feel like it, and for us, it may be kind of interesting to see what we as being blessed by the Father, you know, to become servants to those that don't know Him or servants to the Lord to share with those that don't know Him and to live out our lives. It should be interesting to see what people are going to do kind of with this idea that they think they're going to be a king when they're probably going to be a servant, you know, meaning that they're going to serve the Lord. Because I don't think that it was meant to be a kingdom of kings, but a, you know, when we toss down the crown, you know, give it back to God, but rather a kingdom of priests, you know, where we serve the Lord, and that, you know, it's kind of like this Gentile thing that gets involved in the church where people want to lord it over each other. Well, I'm going to have five cities. I'm going to have ten. I'm going to have twenty. I'm going to have thirty. Well, you know, a rabbi, you know, took care of cities, you know. <laughs> And if you want to go by the Jewish example, you know, the rabbi wasn't like, you know, so much in charge, you know, he was more like, kind of like helping people to find God and the answers to their conflicts. So I think you may find there might be something else for you to do in the kingdom that act like a king. But in the meantime, you know, learning to live with God is why I enjoy these mornings, you know, of videos and devotionals and coming out and checking out the 
plant growth and the plants as they're developing and growing in their season. It was interesting was that last night we um, had this, my bulbs behind me, I think you've seen them, the purple ones, you know, the tulips, they bloomed, you know, and kept blooming and blooming and closing, open and closing. And they were doing really good and then all of a sudden they quit opening and I kind of didn't pay much attention. And I'm not sure when, but last night I, I checked them and they were coated in little buggies, you know, aphids. And, uh, you know, we tried to use this one, you know, <laughs> leave it to California, one safe spray, you know, didn't do anything to the bugs except for tickle them and say, ha, I like that, you know, wash me again. <laughs> and they just kept running, you know, eating my plant. So I went out and got the normal, you know, kind of like from ortho or somebody, you know, from normal bug killing, bug killers. <laughs> Not kind of like the, let's be Greenpeace and save the environment thing, you know, but bam, wiped them out. So. Anyways, but the amazing thing to me was that in one day, there were thousands coding it. It was like, you read about aphids, you find out that they're blood suckers. You know, they suck the life out of the plant. You know, they kind of like, you know, and then they secrete kind of like this oily, sticky film that also kind of makes like, you know, um, infections happen and disease, you know, and you kind of go, ew, aphids sound like a curse. <laughs> and you know, Sometimes there are people around you that are like that. They're like aphids, you know. They're little blood suckers, you know. And one of them might not hurt you. It might be a little, oh, well, you know, okay. That's not bad. You know, kind of like a little tiny thing couldn't bother me. But then where there's one, the rest of them congregate. They get more and more and more. And then thousands of them are on you. Little blood suckers, you know. And not only are they sucking the life out of you, but they're sucking that sustenance that keeps you alive, but then also producing something from it. They're producing something that's a toxin and a poison to other living things. Gross. And then it's like a sticky wicket because that stickiness means that anything you come into contact gets stuck with what you got. Ooh, kind of like infectious. Man, that sounds like sin to me. That's kind of what sin does, you know. It's kind of like an aphid, you know. It, gets involved and starts sucking the life out of you. So you got to get rid of it. And so like with the aphids, you know, it said, you know, you could spray it, you know, and just knock them off, you know, and spray it with water, they said, you know, and then knock them all off and then spray the plant, you know, and it'll kill them when they come on it, you know. And it's like, well, okay, you know, why spray the plant, you know, because it's safe with the plant. And it kills them. Well, that's what you have to do with your own personal sin sometimes. You have to kill those bad habits you have, those aphids of experience of, of life that you've done, you know, like maybe your, your, oh, I don't know, indulgences, you know, because you as a Christian can basically be forgiven. So you kind of indulged yourself into getting involved in certain things, you know, like maybe you need to quit looking at porno, you know, maybe you need to quit, you know, indulging yourself in um, soap operas. Maybe you women need to not have an e-reader that can download the latest romance story that's sexually graphic. Wow. Didn't know that men knew about that. Oh yeah, it's the number one bestseller now. Women in Christianity and in the world are downloading what are called sex novels, not romance novels, sex novels for women. And it's become even bigger than the industry that used to be for men. It's huge. So, pardon me, but I think this indulgence thing is sucking the life out of you and that it's going to affect you, whether you know it or not. It's going to do the same thing to you like pornography did to men. Just going to ruin you because it causes corruption. And what we're, we're told by people that raise tulips and plants that get aphids, not only does it suck the life out of the plant, but it causes the flowers to become deformed and the leaves to grow twisted and tortured. And that kind of reflects in what happened to my plants, you know. It's kind of like they are twisted and they got chewed up some and they got all kind of like contorted. And then also the bloom is kind of messed up. You don't want to be like that, do you? I mean, maybe you want to get rid of those aphids that are in your life, you know. You want to kind of clean up your act and maybe deal with some of those issues 
you've been kind of like postponing because you don't have any time left. As much as it's going to contort you, you really don't have a lot of seasons to grow again. And though you may die off your stem wear and you know your bloom may disappear in the winter, when summer comes, yeah, you grow, but what if Jesus comes? What kind of life are you presenting to him? What kind of fruit or flowering will you be when he sees you? Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Has not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? Heirs of God, and joint heirs with Jesus. If it so be that we suffer with him, that we shall also be glorified together with him. The Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me. God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. And that's what people forget, is that while the one hand we live and breathe and move and have our being in the Spirit of God as He lives in us and is developing us, you know, with good graces and mercy, we also will stand before Jesus, you know, and in that day, the day of Jesus, we receive, you know, rewards for our works, which is good, you know, some of them will be consumed by fire and I guarantee that me, I'm going to, I'm going to smell like wood smoke because it's going to be like hickory, <laughs> hickory barbecue when it comes to my works because, man, people don't know what goes on the inside of me. I'm a sinner. <laughs> I got attitude. <laughs> so, who knows? Puff, you know, there goes me. <laughs> I'm walking around just with the bare skin on my back, or robe in this case running from that fire but likewise when that day of Jesus comes there will be some that have marvelous works and wonderful abilities and outrageous skills and unbelievable ministries that said haven't we done all these things in your name Lord and he says depart from me so you see on the one hand I, I understand once saved always saved but God's got that covered too because Jesus has to know you for you to be always saved because if he don't know you you're not saved he who has the son hath life he who has not the son of God hath not life according to 1 John and if we read 1 John carefully all of 1 John really can be summed up in the word love and when we don't love we're said to have not have the Son. When we do love, we're said to have the Son. It's not just about loving, but it is about relationship. And if your relationship with Jesus isn't leading you to loving more and hating less, and if you aren't kind of like beginning to change, the aphids have got gotcha. you. <laughs> They're sucking the life out of you. Man, you're contorted. You're distorted. You're actually not blooming where you're planted. So you really need to clean up your act, you know, and get back on track. Because the day will come when we all do stand before Jesus, you know, and we look forward to that, believe it or not, and we want to see Jesus as we enjoy him now. But if you're not asking him to maybe talk to you, if you're not listening to what he has to say, then maybe you're missing the point. <laughs>